Awesome. All right, guys, I'm going to start this presentation. I appreciate you for coming today. Uh, my name is Doug Whitten at Pittsburgh State University, as you know, because you're in my class. Um, what I'm presenting on here is the factors that go into recruiting for college marching band members. Uh, college marching band, that's some background here, is different than other fields in that um, we have to build numbers. You know, certainly any classroom you have to be people to it. But for example, in the college marching band, we started here at Pittsburgh State University with 50 or so students before I got here. My first year we had 70 in the band. Uh, and then over time we built it to over 200, you know, back a little bit from that right now. But you know, we've had a lot of success in recruiting here. And that comes from going out and actively talking to people and trying to get people into the program. That being said, most people who are in college marching bands are not DC majors. Um, the, all the research I read said about 70% of college marching band members are not music majors. So that means that all the research that was done on recruiting music students doesn't really apply because they're not music majors. There's a lot of literature on it, um, like how to get kids into your studio, how to get students into the university on it, but like I just said, it doesn't apply directly to the marching band. Um, because of that, there's a big gap in the literature, meaning nobody has researched to date recruiting for marching band specifically. Don't have a cool pointer on this computer, so I have to do this the, the hard way. All right, so the method um, where I tried to fill that gap was I ran a questionnaire. The things that I looked at were um, I wanted to know who I was, uh, who the question I was going to. So I did a some background stuff to find out like what size of school, what athletic affiliation, like were they a Division I school like K-State, or were they a little tiny school like Bethany or somewhere in between like ours. I wanted to know what the students' majors were, and just a lot of background information on who it was, so I could disaggregate that down later. Um, I wanted to look at college choice factors. Why did they choose the college they went to? You know, was it the price? Was it I wanted to be a gorilla or whatever that type of factor? The participation factors, like why would someone choose to be in marching band, why would someone choose not to be in marching band, you know, that's, uh, it takes too much time, it costs money, well, you know, what were people's concerns when they were choosing to be in band. Then I'm looking at influence factors as well. Uh, influence of why did you choose that, why did you choose to come to that university, uh, did they person you? did you talk to the band director, wow, he's super cool, so I'm going to be in his band, or what kind of other people, counselors, etc. Uh, and then other recruiting factors, such as the active recruiting. Did getting that brochure mailed to you make a difference? Did that phone call make a difference? So these are the type of factors that I was looking at. So um, when I ran this data, I came up with um, some college choice factors. And these, these factors came from, I read a lot of literature, a lot of different research papers and stuff like that. Uh, and I found what other people and the main ones that uh, popped up in the literature were the schools had an academic major. This is the, the to go to a college, not for the marching band. Um, they have their major. Do people come because of the academic reputation of the school, the cost, campus atmosphere, all that kind of stuff. And this is actually ranked by how many times it popped up in the literature and also from my, my uh, research with the students who took the um, survey, what they came up. So this is ranked, you know, did they have an academic major pop up as number one? Whereas, um, you know, because we're talking about college marching band, I thought maybe the football program would be really important. You know, like, do they go to school because they have a good football team? Surprising to me, that was not a major factor. Um, when, in the uh, sample who I gave students to, or gave the surveys to, that might explain that a little bit more. Uh, but I had big schools like K, K State, MU, I had small schools like Pittsburgh. State. I had the full game in there. It was pretty good representation. So I was really surprised that um, the football team reputation was not that big a deal. But that would be just um, on the surface level. If you look at KU, has a pretty good sized marching band. They have around 300 people in it. And their football team stinks. <laughs> you know, just to be down. They won one game this year. Um, I did run the same data and looked at these things 
just aggregated by the different types of schools. So um, the ranks that I showed you before are up here in the first column. But looking at these other columns, it's broken down by all the different uh, types of schools. So Division I schools ranked um, differently than those like junior college. So some of these that I find kind of interesting is um, size of institution is way more important over here at big school than it is in a JUCO. But in a small, like NAIA team, it's really important. So I just think it's really interesting that the different factors mean different things to all different schools. I just think that's kind of cool. In other words, if you're really interested in quality football program, you're probably going to be more likely to go to K-State than KU or Penn State or well, Penn State has great football. You don't have that same atmosphere. Um, ease of admission, not surprisingly, is really important to someone at the junior college. Ease of admission was not that important to someone who was going to a more selective university like a private school. So what this uh, chart shows is just that students from different types of schools choose their schools for different reasons. So what um, criteria do students use when they decide to take the marching specifically? Um, the, this is ranked by, from the, from the survey instrument that I, I ran. A lot of people that want to be in the college marching band because they just really want to be part of something. And, um, remember, this is mostly non-majors, so they mostly don't have to do it. So they're doing it because they want to be part of something. They want to continue making music. They want to, uh, a lot of times they observe the band they chose that school. Like maybe they looked at three schools, but they saw the Pitt State band and thought, that's what I want to do. And I know that that's often the case. Um, here, you know, it's not that we're necessarily better. I like to think we're pretty darn good. But more importantly than better, we're what we are. You know, some people really associate with that type of a vibe. And if you want to be super hardcore, you might look at Missouri State, which is a lot more standard attention kind of thing. So, um, I was, a, I was surprised at scholarships and the size of the band and some of those things that I had assumed from talking to students and from reading literature. They turned out in my survey to not be as important as just the reputation and the energy and that type of stuff. In the school. So this is that same information disaggregated out by the different sizes of schools. And when you look at, at these things, like should I be in marching band, the ones who do the marching band in the junior college, please keep in mind that there's only two junior colleges in this region, so they were pretty underrepresented. But their information, like what was important to them, was just totally different than at the bigger schools. So kind of the same stuff I was talking about before. But the big things that were really important to students across the board were they were concerned about how much time it takes, they were concerned about can I use an instrument, those kind of things were really um, facilities and stuff like that didn't seem to play much of an attention. And as you can see in our old barn here, the electrical we're moving out of soon, clearly you're here, and this did not distract you too much. Influence of people in college choice of band participation. This one is really um, getting to the crux of why I do this research. What I'm hoping to do is find, is there a, could I find something out of this that said, Here's a way to go and recruit. Uh, I'll get some more to that at the conclusions. But um, what were the effects of people like the college band director was across the board the person that was most responsible for people coming to the school. Most people came to this university and they, and they who came here would have cited, I met with the band director and that would have been myself or Dr. Fuchs at the time. And those relationships are why a lot of people came. Or they went and they met somebody at some other university and were like, oh, that guy's just too whatever. You know, they you tend to gravitate towards a certain type of person that you want to be involved with. So I found across the board that the, that the influence of the college band director going up there was the highest by far. Closely after that was a recommendation of the high school band directors. Um, Current college band members, like if you have friends or know somebody in the band, that was fairly influential. So if you go out, and, if you go back to your high school on a Friday night football game and said, "Wow, I had a great time at Pitt State," that was more influential than a lot of other types of factors out there. Parents, friends, 
I am very happy to see that the influence of high school counselor was not that high, because I keep hearing when I'm out there recruiting that the counselors say, well, you're not going to have time to do this. You're going to be busy in college, so you don't want to be marching band. You know, research shows that band kids do better if you're in college marching band, you're more likely to graduate than a non-involved uh, non student, not the band or choir orchestra or something like that. And so with that in mind, they're, the high school counselors are going to be bad information out there. So I'm really glad to see that that was not very influential. Uh, this is the, the same stuff, but disaggregated out. And the contrasts are not all that great for the most part. The music faculty, other than the director, somehow ranked a little bit higher. So I'm not quite sure of that anomaly. But, um, but that changes when you look at who was doing it. So in um, the really small schools, the director was really important. But in the really small schools, like the Sterling Colleges, you know, the little liberal arts schools, that's where having a one-on-one relationship with, like, the oboe teacher or something like that was more important. I was surprised by this information. For, for, for recruiting of music majors, it makes complete sense. Um, so I can't really answer for why that anomaly is there. But still, number two out there, not, and only just a little bit behind it, was the college um, band director, parents, and the same kind of Okay, recruiting factors, these are um, all the things that we actively do to go out and try to recruit. So as opposed to, um, somebody told me, this is the university sends you a brochure, gives you a call. It's the active recruiting. And this is really the nuts and bolts of, like, we can affect this, we can't affect, we can build a better band to affect reputation, but I can give you a call and talk to you. you know, I can actively recruit. So that's what this stuff is all about here. And not surprisingly, across the board, visiting with the band director was always like the top recruiting thing that happened. Hearing and actually seeing the band, you know, that matters. So the implication is if you can get your band out in front of people, you're going you're to do better recruiting than if you never go out and perform. Mm -hmm. You get out and perform more, don't you? Um, campus tours, all that kind of stuff. What I thought was kind of interesting is if, um, Media such as Facebook posts, Instagram, billboards on signs when you drive through Tulsa, there are signs where you university drive through, you see them everywhere. That stuff had very little impact. I, that was surprising. It still comes down to the old fashioned that I shake your hand and meet you somewhere. That seems to go a lot longer than anything else. This is the um, same factors broken down by uh, all those different affiliations, making you already a small school, big school. And um, just a quick glance over this stuff. Same information. Um, it all, the rankings almost change none, regardless of the class. So the small school is still that physical band director, and the big school is still the physical band director, all the way on down. Very little variation in that there. I took another look at these same factors. Um, by whether they were music majors or non-music majors, and I expected to see quite a lot of change in this. And um, some I did, but this is not broken down by um, top and stuff like that. This is more alphabetical and stuff like that at this point. But in these factors here, if you glance at the numbers, I know it's kind of hard to see it from where you are there, but um, I don't want to get into a big statistics conversation here, but the p-value, the closer to zero is the more average it is. It's like a bell curve kind of a thing. So in essence, um, what my numbers spit out is, if you, if you look at these numbers, they're all pretty close to each other on there. But media and stuff, I mean, including media and stuff like that. So most of the, most of the same factors that work on recruiting music major are also important to the non-major. Pretty much the uh, biggest difference is um, the factors such as big time college atmosphere can matter more to a non-major than to a major. But pretty much across the board, your recruiting plan based on this information, you can use the same for a major or a non-major. You know, it still comes down to relationships. 